<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chamber Chats. My name is Carol Guest. I'm the chair of the board for the Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. And today we have the privilege and opportunity to speak with Mr. Cecil Ivy. Hello, Mr. Ooh, Cecil Ooh, Ivey. How you doing? <laughs> Thank doing you guys. Good. It's good to see you. You too, you too. Definitely appreciate you guys having us on. It's really an honor. So thank you for that. Well, we want to hear about uh, some advice and you know what's going on in your industry with regard to helping families. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm right. going to let everyone know a little bit about Mr. Cecil L. Ivy Sr. And CEO of Cindy's List Funeral Concierge and Inheritance <laughs> Protection. Cecil has been more than 20 years serving to servicing families, helping them prepare for yesterday, purchase the future, and protect their inheritance has been his primary focus. An entrepreneur and community advocate, Mr. Ivy currently serves as the executive director of the Minority Burial Grounds Preservation Network, a nonprofit that supports community-based organizations tasked to restore and preserve the sacred burial space and history of minority cultures. Cecil has held various leadership positions throughout his corporate career, but educating and assisting the community has been his passion. Hearing about all the the bodies, for lack of a better term, um, you know, how they're being handled in New York and these other places where yes. um, there's a, there's been a high number of passings. And yes. We're hoping that, that that does not happen here in Houston. Um, but, you know, just like everything else, we try to get in front of things here in Houston. So Absolutely. Uh, that's the main reason why we wanted to have you on today. And, you know, um, so people can get prepared. So we're going to get right Absolutely. into our questions. Uh, All right, let's do it. So what's the toughest thing about your job right now, Cecil? Uh, well, for me personally, and I think it goes for a lot of us in the industry, our biggest concern is making sure that we're not bringing anything back to our families, uh, to our kids, uh, you know, so... I actually just recently had a daughter on April 1st, so definitely trying oh, not to get her soon. Oh, thank you, ma'am. She's a knucklehead, but yeah, but <laughs> definitely, definitely not trying to bring anything to, uh, back to our family. So I think that's a, a big concern and, you know, most important for, you know, what, what's going on right now. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, when you're counseling families in connection mm -hmm. with this, because I know you all likely practicing social distancing, like... Yes. The rest of us are you're sanitizing your locations like the rest of us are um in the midst of that you know when you're when you're speaking with families what are you seeing in terms of what they're going through during this time yes ma'am so uh, a lot of exactly what you just said so you know of course the death of a loved one is hard for anybody at any time whether it's a pandemic or not uh, but what we're seeing is a lot of limitations as far as how they're able to get their closure. Uh, so what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, a lot of funeral homes and uh, in the area, actually across the country, uh, are limiting it to 10 people at a memorial service, like 10 people max. Uh, but that's not including usually uh, the clergy or the funeral home staff, but that's 10 people in your immediate family. And, you know, we're talking to the black chamber here. So our families are pretty big. So, yeah. you know, everybody wants to go through the funeral. So, you know, not being able to have that closure uh, is definitely hard for some of our families. Uh, so we're definitely seeing that disinfecting. So um, some funeral homes, depending on who you're working with, will allow 10 people per hour. Uh, but, you know, you have to sanitize in between each one. Uh, you can only have 10 people on the premises, not, not just period. Uh, you know, they're, it, it's just it's very difficult right now. You know what I mean, and of course, the, the mask, the social distancing. Uh, you know, we actually have a no handshake, no hug policy. Uh, I am definitely a hugger uh, and it's hard for me. Uh, but we had to implement it to make sure that our families are safe. So, right. And it's just, you know, the, it, if, it's abnormal behavior. 
you know, yes. we're not used to doing that, you know, especially right. during a time of bereavement, you, mm. you know, hug is reassuring, you right. know, but, you know, I, yeah, I look at it as a, this yeah. is happening for a reason. I keep telling yes, you. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. No coincidence. So, yes, ma'am. Especially um, a hug right now could potentially be a death sentence. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's scary. And that's uh, very scary. Right. Yeah, we've actually seen uh, some funeral homes are actually screening people uh, before they even allow them in the memorial. So uh, it's definitely an adjustment. So, wow. So uh, when you say screening, uh, are they taking checking temperatures? T- taking temperatures, uh, asking questions, make sure they haven't had any contact with the virus or been exposed. So, mm-hmm. so that kind of behavior, um, mm-hmm. our listeners should not be uh, appalled by. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because uh, in the end game, it's all for everybody's safety. I mean, if we can nip this in the bud now, the quicker the better, of course. But yeah, this is for everybody's safety. So yeah, don't be offended by it. Yeah. And it's just for right now. It's just right. right now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, so from a business perspective, uh, we are the mm-hmm. Chamber of Commerce. Right. Um, it would seem that as morbid as it sounds, the funeral business is thriving. Uh, is, do you find that to be the case? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the funeral industry is definitely one of those industries that's recession, right? Uh, so, uh, although there is a boom going on right now, but the boom that we're seeing is mostly, like you said earlier, in those New Yorks. Uh, those Louisiana. So those areas are definitely seeing an increase uh, in revenue and, you know, clients treated or, you know, assisted. So uh, for us here in Houston, it's pretty much been business as usual. Uh, Just in Texas, we've only had 350 COVID deaths in Texas. Uh, So comparative to New York, which is in the thousands, I believe now. So, uh, you know, we, we haven't seen it as much, but the funeral industry as a whole, it's always moving. <laughs> so, I mean, someone has to fill that gap. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So funeral directors are definitely unsung heroes for sure. So mm-hmm. yes. I can I can only imagine. Um yeah. so you mentioned um the no hug, no handshake policy Correct. that you have. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, what other adjustments have you had to make during this pandemic? Uh, so we definitely had to invest in more PPE, uh, uh, personal protection equipment. Uh, so, you know, of course, we, we deal with the families uh, at Cindy's List Funeral Concierge. So we, we work hand in hand with the funeral director so, and the funeral home. So we, we see both sides of it. But, you know, we really didn't have to deal with the, the gloves, the masks, the you know, buckets of hand sanitizer and all that good stuff. So we definitely had to invest in uh, the PPEs for, you know, not only our employees, but our families as well. So that's definitely been a change for us, an adjustment for us. So, and of course, the social distancing, uh, the no handshake, no hug policy. Uh, and we've really been making a, a real effort about digitizing all of our paperwork and everything that we need in order to, you know, accomplish the, the funeral for the family. So uh, that's been real good. But we've also implemented, uh, you know, streaming services, Zoom calls, you know, for, you know, uh, the c- conversations with the family. So, uh, yeah. So we've had to make it just got to pivot. So yeah. You have to pivot in business. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Absolutely. you have to be nimble. Yeah, and right. I think during this season, a lot of business owners are recognizing that that you have yes. to be able to pivot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, ma'am. Hey, I, I'm assuming that you've heard about the drive-through funeral process. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Actually, way before this. So this has actually been really. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this has been something that's been discussed for a while now there's actually a few of them in the country already like before all this happened so but yes drive through funeral services are becoming more popular uh, so if you think about um i don't know it's like window shopping in your car you know what I mean? so you drive up and there's just a big window with the body and the flowers and all that good stuff so uh yeah <laughs> it's interesting okay. and yeah. i'm I'm really curious, why would someone do a drive-by 
or drive through funeral in normal times? Mm -hmm. Yes. So most of the time that what, what, what we were seeing was for the elderly. Uh, you know, it's hard for them getting in and out the car in the first place. You know what okay. I mean? So getting in and out, going to the service, getting out, going to the funeral, getting out, going to the grave site. So, you know, if they have limited mobility, then we see, you know, a benefit definitely for them. Uh, yeah. You know, or if your kid's bad, keep them outside. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be a reason that you know. That could. It really could. So, you know, yeah, people right? put in work when it comes to setting up funerals, they wouldn't necessarily yes. want to have some kids coming right. through <laughs> right. causing some problems. Uh, um, have you, um, so what kind of, what kind of, um, how should I say this, adjustments have you made? You know, mm -hmm. are, are you um, supporting the drive-through funeral process? And uh, yes, ma'am. So, as Cindy's listening to concierge, it's our job to make the family's vision a reality, uh, whatever that looks like. You know, I mean, if, if it needs to be a drive through because that's our only options, then we'll present it to the family and they'll let them make that decision. But we support whatever is going to, you know, allow that family to have closure, you know, allow them to say goodbye to their loved ones. So, I mean, if we need to, you know, pick a venue that, I don't know, that's top of New York State, but I don't know, you know what I mean, then we'll make that happen for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, whatever their desires are with regard to planning the funeral, yes, um, that's what you assist them in doing. Correct. And mm -hmm. in, in this day and age, you do it according to the social distancing rules. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Social distancing, PPE, uh, again, no handshake, no hug, uh, all of the above. Uh, definitely sanitizing every five minutes, uh, you know doing as much as we can to prevent the spread so mm -hmm. so if it's a drive-through funeral uh -huh. drive-by funeral <laughs> right. everybody has to stand outside yes. and wave yeah. you know yeah. um then that's what it is. if that's what the family wants You're correct you know we have to be understanding yeah and we have to respect their wishes so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we. This is a time to be patient for sure. Yes, agreed. Agreed. So, um, with regard mm -hmm. to the funeral industry, okay, we know right. Well, comparing it to the medical industry, okay, we know that doctors, nurses, those are in those right. positions are in high demand right now. Correct. Um, would you say that there are positions in the funeral industry that are in high demand at the moment? Uh, so what we're saying is that funeral directors are definitely in high demand, uh, but again, it's in those areas that are most affected by COVID. Uh, so we've actually seen where New York is actually uh, trying to get more funeral directors in state so that they can help with you know, the overflow of what's going on. Uh, but we're also seeing a definitely increase in demand in more capacity. Uh, so, you know, when people are exposed to COVID that actually may delay their services, which means you have to store the body somewhere. So uh, we're seeing an increase in more capacity uh, and then storage. We're seeing the increase in funeral directors in those areas hardest hit. Uh, and we're definitely seeing a increase in demand for PPE, obviously, across the nation. So yeah. we are also affected by that. So, uh, you know, PPEs are usually something that are, you know, necessary for a funeral home anyway. But because everybody's buying it now, it's getting a little bit harder to buy. So. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think you know, from an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial perspective, mm -hmm. um, the funeral business is kind of like the food industry in that okay. you always have a customer. Oh, right. <laughs> That's a good point. Yes, ma'am. So. Right. A career or a business in that industry yes. is something mm -hmm. that people should think about. They should think right. About. Yeah, actually, we got into it for different reasons, but yeah, it's really yes. Uh, so I've ne I've never in my life met a funeral director or funeral owner um, that had financial or you know that wasn't financially well off. So PPE is in high demand now. In your Definitely. Business. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. So like I said, we're definitely, it's always been something that's been needed. Uh, 
uh, as part of a, you know, a standard funeral home practice. But because everybody else is buying it right now, it's definitely getting a lot harder to find. Yeah. yeah. And we're, I know across the country, we're doing our best to try to make it happen. You know, right. PPEs in, into uh, people's hands. Yes. So, correct. you know, we're talking about funerals, you know, the typical scenario where our loved mm -hmm. ones are buried. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen an uptick in people interested in cremation? Actually, it's funny you should ask. So cremation has been on the rise since the 70s. Really? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, right around 60, 65, 70 is when that tip actually went from burial to cremation. So by 2023, we're actually expecting cremation to be 60% of the disposition that's selected by family. So uh, a lot of times it's actually based on the cost, uh, but a lot of people just, you know, don't want to deal with get cremated. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, that's but it's really been on the rise. Here. To me. Um, yeah. What do you find are the major reasons for creation versus burial? Uh, well, definitely financial. Uh, so definitely financial. The average cremation is going to cost you roughly about $3,000 average. Uh, whereas your average burial is going to cost you roughly seven to eight thousand, uh, but that's not even including your burial plot or your grave marker. So uh, your average funeral runs about ten thousand easy. Uh, we actually helped a family, uh, probably. Uh, oh, don't go on it. Oh, okay. okay, I got a hunger. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually helped a family, and the the, uh, the funeral cost was fourteen thousand dollars. I mean, of course, we were able to come in and reduce that cost significantly, but uh, the, the cost of a burial, now you have, with a burial, you got, you got your casket, uh, you got the opening and closing of the grave, you got your, your uh, grave markers, you got your cemetery plot. So those costs add up quick. Then you need police to escort you to the grave site. And so, you know, it's definitely a lot expensive with cremation. Uh, you can do a direct cremation and it can be as cheap as $1,000, you know what I mean? So uh, a direct burial, which is when you skip all the, the memorial services and just go from directly to the cemetery, you know, that could run you about three or 4,000, you know what I mean, to reduce your cost, but you don't get that memorial service, you're not, you know, all of that good stuff, so. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be prepared, you know, if you're thinking about the cremation route, that you're yes. not going to be able to enjoy the traditional aspects oh no you can you can yeah so what you can do so it's going to cost more of course mm -hmm. uh, but you can you can have the whole ceremony the, the body there you can actually rent the casket is what it is so oh. you yeah so you rent the casket for a, a significant amount of money so average probably about six to fifteen hundred depending on which, which funeral home you go to but uh, you can rent the casket have the whole memorial service the preachers everything and then once the service is over, they'll take you out of there. Go eat in the fire. <laughs> that is, see, we these are things that you know we wouldn't necessarily know, and that's why we need an right. expert like you, absolutely, in business to kind of walk us through these choices, especially yes. now because, yeah, you know, money is tight, you know, yes. all the way around. And yeah. you know, speaking of that, how have you seen families kind of deal with the cost of funerals at this stage. So that's exactly why we exist. That is the reasons why Cindy's List Funeral Concierge exists. So when we started, um, we actually started because of a wig, actually. So uh, grandmother passed away in 2017. Uh, and Funeral Home did a wonderful job. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, us in the funeral homes, we work hand to hand. So that, you know, I mean, those my boys. But uh, Funeral Home did a wonderful job, but at the end of it, we got that itemized receipt, essentially is what it is, the statement of goods and services. And what I realized is that the funeral home had charged $75 to put a wig on her. Uh, a wig that we bought, had style. The only thing they had to do was put it on her head, 75 bucks, you know what I mean? So, uh, oh, no, I, oh, I could have did it for 10, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. Uh, exactly, so I started researching, started researching about the, the funeral industry and cost and why it costs so much. And so we would actually help them reduce their costs because we go directly to the casket manufacturers. We go directly to the barbers. So there's, that, there's not that 
two, three, four, five hundred percent markup that you see at some of the funeral homes. Not all, and not all bad apples, but there are some. <laughs> yes, uh, but you know th that's interesting because people I've heard over the years, especially when we've lost family members, that mm -hmm. um, you know how expensive things are. Yes, yes, you know? and especially for people who don't have uh, burial insurance or any type of yes. funeral insurance. You know, yes. um, and I would tend to think that during this time, uh, there are several people who are just kind of caught out there because yep. no one planned mm -hmm. for this. I mm -hmm. mean, a pandemic, and you certainly didn't think your loved one was going to pass. Right. So Absolutely. What's what are some of the ways that um, you see families coping from a financial perspective, you know, being able to pay for a cremation or a funeral? Well, again, we try to reduce their costs as much as possible. So, you know, we remove anything that doesn't make sense. I mean, financially, uh, you know, maybe you can't get that golden casket that you want for grandma. So uh, we may have to downgrade. So, I mean, if they want their loved one buried, because the funeral home is not going to move forward without their money. That yeah. is very true. So uh, it doesn't matter what type of situation, financial situation is, that you're in, they want to get paid. Yeah, you know I mean, understandably so. I mean, they're providing a service. But, I mean, we have to deal with it as much as we can. So, of course, we see the GoFundMe's. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that. Oh, let me tell you. Okay, so with a GoFundMe, right? So a lot of states actually have uh, programs that assist people that are desolate uh, with very, or cremating their loved ones. But as soon as you put a GoFundMe page up, what you've done is show the state that you have other means of accumulating money to pay for that service. So now you don't qualify for that program anymore, right? Uh, so, right, exactly. So, uh, but we see the GoFundMe's, we see the fish fries, you know, we see the, the dinners being sold or t-shirts sold. So, uh, you, you know, we gotta, we do what we can to make it work, you know, everybody pulling their money together or, you know, cause a lot of times, like you said, a lot of people don't have insurance, which is something that, uh, through our inheritance protection, we can assist with that as well. Okay. And so um, w for those who are not familiar, you know, with uh -huh. the burial process, how can yes. they get prepared to, you know, lay their loved ones to rest? Well, there's a few things you can do. First off, you can give us a call here at Cindy's List. Uh, so we, d we can definitely help you with that. So uh, what we do, actually, we help you uh prepare for yesterday purchase the future and protect your inheritance so what does that mean right so when you prepare for yesterday uh so think of this close your eyes think about your family think about what they're doing now what their life is like and think about their life tomorrow you know what i mean what would their tomorrow look like if you died yesterday mm -hmm. right so we help you prepare for that so whether that's helping you draft your will or draft your, your body disposition form. Do you want to be buried, cremated, turned into a tree? Uh, it's a simple form. You get notarized. Now your family knows what you want. Uh, you know, things of that nature. So we can definitely assist you with that and getting you prepared for that. Uh, but definitely the insurance. So protecting your inheritance through life insurance. Please get life insurance, even if it's just enough to get you cremated with three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars insurance policy. Please, uh, for me, uh, uh, actually for your loved ones, but for me too. You know what I mean? So, uh, so through our inheritance protection, we can assist you with finding that policy, whether it's final expense, whole life, or term life, uh, to actually assist to make sure that you're covered. Uh, but then you also have the option of our funeral concierge. So for only $5.99 a month, you actually have access to a funeral concierge that will assist you and your family with negotiating with the funeral home. And of course, you get those discounts on all your caskets and urns and flowers and all that good stuff. So you, you're immediately reducing your costs with that membership. So reach out to us. We can definitely assist you with preparing purchasing and protecting and that's www.cindyslistllc.com that's c-i-n-d-y-s-l-i-s-t-l-l-c.com or call us at the office we always available 724-624-9297 uh, and just for our greater houston family I i'll give you my direct line i'm also available as well so you can call me directly 832 443 
6123 and tell us you saw us on the Greater Houston Chamber chat and we'll talk about a discount. We ain't gonna say wow. how much on air. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, but you must be a member. Uh, but y'all yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, you doggone right. Of the opportunity. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. You must. You absolutely must. And we yeah. appreciate that, Cecil. We appreciate that. You know, um, all of us are going to meet that end. Yes. Know? Unfortunately, some of us during the season, others of us later, but um, you know, I can only imagine the weight that is lifted off of the family having someone yes. like you in charge of, you know, getting all of those things together. Right, right. And the beautiful thing about our organization is that once you have all that, so once you have your, your disposition, you have your plan and you want your ashes scattered over Montego Bay and you know, you have your life insurance and you're a member of the concierge family or the, the Cindy's List membership family, then the only thing you need to do is call us and activate your plan. That's it. You call, you activate your plan. We know what you want. We know what you like. We know that you have this insurance policy. We know that you're already a member. So everything will come together perfectly with one phone call. Well, that, I mean, I, I don't see how much easier it can get because, right. um, you know, you, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult time and it really is. You can get, you know, and not necessarily have family members feuding right. or in your ear right. how something should go. Um, right. You know, the better it is, the better yes. it is really and truly Absolutely. The, better, the better it is. Um, how are you and your staff holding up? Oh, you know, I, ain't nobody but God keeping us all right. You know what I mean? So by the graces of God, we're doing all right. You know, everybody's still healthy. Everybody's still working. Uh, definitely still helping families. Still, yeah. Yeah. It's business as usual. So, well, not as usual, but, you know, yes. as usual. <laughs> right. Keeping a positive attitude. You know, Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. You about. have to. Yeah. Especially yeah. dealing with, I mean, when you deal with death every day, you know, you, you have to. You really have to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Cecil Ivy, we appreciate your time today. And, you know, thank you for being so willing to service our community in this way. It takes a special person with a certain skill set to do this well. And um, so we appreciate your service to the community. And if you would give your contact information one more time before we sign off today. I, I absolutely will. So, I am Cecil Ivey, the CEO of Cindy's List Funeral Concierge and Inheritance Protection. You can reach us at the office at 724-624-9297, or you can call me directly, 832-443-6123, and definitely go out and be, become a member for only $5.99 a month. It actually covers five people in your household. Uh, and you have the concierge service and the discounts on your funeral services and merchandise. And you can do that on our website at www.cindyslistllc.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-S-L-I-S-T-L-L-C.com. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you again for your time today. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching today. Hopefully you can take some things with you that you can share with your loved ones during this difficult time. Uh, feel free to utilize Cecil services and remember members can discuss a discount. Uh, hello. <laughs> so we encourage you to become a member of the chamber during this time. We want to continue to be able to bring you informative topics like the one that we're discussing today during our chamber chats and to continue to bring you all the programming that we have at the chamber. So we encourage you to visit our website at www.ghbcc.com. That's ghbcc.com for any information you might wanna learn about the chamber and about uh, COVID-19 resources. We have those posted as well. And follow us on social media. We have a lot of information posted about services, about our members, uh, about just being a part of our community. Because at this time, we want to connect with you. We want to make sure you're okay. And we want to make sure that your business is okay. So be sure to follow us on um, social media at Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. So 
We will look to see you again mm -hmm. on our next chamber chat. And thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Mr. Cecil Ivey. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And thank you for having us. Really been an honor. Uh, follow us on social media too. I forget it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, thank you all for having us. Definitely an honor. Appreciate it.